And we start the recording now. Uh, all right, hello everyone. It's uh, 28th of October. It is the IPFS core implementations weekly sync again. Welcome back. It's been so long, but you're all back. I'm particularly enjoying Dirk's scenery in the background. Um, cool, all right, uh, without further ado, if you're here, please put your name on the attendees list in the crypt pad. I think Jim has already pasted it in the chat. I will paste it here again, just in case anyone missed it. Put your name there. If you're here and would like to share uh, an update, then please add it to uh, the bottom. There's a section called um, weekly updates for async review. We'll not go over these in the meeting, but you, if you put your uh, update here, then people can review it asynchronously at their leisure uh, and possibly respond to you because what happens after this meeting is the notes get pull requested to a, the team management repo. And so uh, you, we can follow up there. So that's good. Um, the other thing is uh, we will go through initiatives and things. If you are part of an initiative, please um, maybe think of some things uh, that you might want to update us on by the time we get through to that part uh, and, and we will talk about them and update each other. Um, but yeah, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, we have a note taker, Jim is note taker. Thank you, Jim. And um, let's get started. So the initiatives, let's go through the initiatives. Um, first one up is the upgraded release process. Um, there's not so much to update here from the JS IBFS side, I guess uh, the, the release process has been upgraded and we are making a few improvements to it as we go along, but then we've got now got a couple of releases under our belt using it, which is super good news. Uh, JS IPFS 039 was released um, last week, I think. Um, uh, Friday, I think. Uh, so that's super cool. There's a blog post, check it out. Um, Alex basically drove that one. So um, say, say hi and thank you to Alex when you next get a chance. Uh, and the other news is that, uh, yeah, we're so, you know, 39's out, we start on 40. And there's an issue there, so you can have a look uh, if you like and, uh, and get involved with the planning. Um, yeah, uh, and that's all, I guess, unless there is some GoYPFS release process news. No, nah, Stephen is shaking his head. Um, okay, um, any questions on release process before we move on? All righty. Uh, so next up we have um, upgrading testing infra and process. Uh, Jim, would you like to give us an update on that? Is there anything to update? Um, yeah, I, I've been working on it all last week. Um, and also David, he's been uh, putting together um, some test cases as well as Dirk. Um, Dirk uh, is just sort of just introducing him to the project. And uh, he, he's, he's- He's the first customer, to, uh, right? Yeah, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> so we've got, some we've got some test cases that sort of use bit swap to sort of like hello world type of things. And but Dirk's actually working on BitSwap, so it, 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 he's going to actually like build a real test with it, uh, and we're, um, we're going to work with him to do that. Um, I, I'm working on um, some. We can, I can build little sort of clusters right now, um, but there's a lot of sort of manual steps to doing that. So I've been working on uh, putting in some Ansible scripting to automate that. So it should be uh, maybe not exactly one press one button to start a, a new cluster, but pretty close. And um, and David's been working on um, planning and figuring out what, what the test cases should be. And next week we're all going to get together in person um, and have a, sort of a hack week on it. So um, that should be fun. So. Nice. That sounds very cool. Um, is there is there like a, a link to a roadmap or something for uh, test ground that we can um, we can get on the notes or something so that people I, I can do, follow along. I, yeah, I do believe there's something in, there's a roadmap uh, that David's been putting together in the test ground repo and I'll dig that up and put it in the notes here. Sounds super cool. Really excited about having a, a really solid testing platform for, for big scale P2P testing. Um, all right, does anyone have any questions about that before we move on? 
Okay, um, cool. Next up is uh, subdomain gateway. I don't know why I always have the preview, the rendered thing, and I put it, make it big, and I always seem to just look at the markdown, which is super confusing. That's why I take so long. Um, yeah, next up is the uh, uh, subdomain gateway. Lido, hi, how are you doing? Hello. Uh, yeah, so I, I guess two updates. One is uh, the website, I believe, Oli or you created uh, uh, with uh, sort of like a CID analyzer. Uh, that uh, website did not support uh, lib P2P key multicodec. So if someone uh, pasted a CID view, like a peer ID represented as CID there, the website returned error, which was bad. Uh, that's fixed. And uh, there's like a link, an example of uh, peer ID represented uh, in CID in base32. And you can see in, on that website, uh, all those segments are correctly decoded now. Um, yep. And uh, that was sort of uh, a website used in uh, things like uh, lip 2 p specs and RFC 0001. So it's pretty good to got that sorted out. Uh, I believe Oli fixed uh, CI, uh, CD at some point. So thanks for that. And the second update is I sort of uh, uh, scratched this itch of uh, peer idea CID support in uh, JS land. And uh, up, there's open uh, PR uh, for updating peer ID. And I believe actually that plus minus the second one for one method in multi other is enough to bring this support to um, JSIPFS uh, to the stage one from the PR. I forgot to link, so I probably will add, um, add it here, maybe. Yep. Uh, so there's like a tracking issue, and uh, the, the implementation of RFC 001 is split into two stages. And the first stage is basically just adding support for CID representation without switching uh, the default. And we, for that, we need to switch JSIPFS to this new JS peer ID. Uh, the, and there's like a draft PR for that. The problem is uh, this latest peer ID is as, requires like async refactor and like switching all, all the crypto and key man management uh, uh, machine in lip 2 p So I guess the next step is to make a decision in the last link I've uh, posted in the JSIPFS draft. Should we uh, simply include that in the async uh, await refactor or should we like back port those changes to old versions? I would like to uh, like focus on async. So if I can help with that, I'll probably do that because I sort of like started refactoring JSAPFS and then I realized, oh, I'm already like doing this, so I don't, I'm, I don't want to duplicate work, so we probably need to coordinate. Um, and then later I probably think with Steven to sort of align uh, stage one between JS and Go. Uh, and I, I looked at the Python version as well because the similar uh, fix for stage one. Uh, could be applied there. Not sure about Rust. We did not look into that yet. I guess that's it. Nice, thank you. I actually, um, just today, because I was reviewing your pull request on to JS peer ID, I took that peer ID and I put it into CID.IPFS.io fully ex expecting it to blow up and it didn't and I was so impressed. So that is, that is super good news. Um, that was, I did not build that. I think Ollie made it good last, but I think it existed. Someone else built a version of it before that. Um, but yeah, it's a super useful tool um, that, that uh, that's about if you want to inspect your CIDs and what they're made of. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, w in terms of like the async await, I think that's probably a good plan. I would um, let sync offline um, about like where you can be most useful with that um, uh, after the after the meeting. 
Um, but yeah, just to kind of reiterate the, what Lyd was working on is, is a key component of being able to switch to V1 CIDs because V1 CIDs means that we can ha use uh, base32 encoded uh, string CIDs, which means that we, they can be used in origins of URLs because they're not um, they're not case sensitive, um, and we need it for we need it to happen in peer IDs because um, we want to use IPNS and IPNS is typically peer IDs. Um, so uh, yeah, key component. Uh, I'm really happy that that's being worked on. So um, thank you, Lydell, for the update. Does anyone have any questions on th that before we head on? All right, um, great. Uh, distributed signaling uh, still on is still on hold. I'm guessing still on hold. Still on hold. Yes. yes. Um, uh, IPNS is Aiden or Hugo around to give us an update? Is there an update to give? No, no neither of them. Oh, no, Aiden's here. Uh, yeah, yeah Stephen. Yeah, yeah uh, they're not too much on the IPNS front. There's some hub sub things, but uh, basically, I've been moved to deal with other pressing things since IPNS will no longer be a fire. So, cool. Um, it's not on here, but there's some brief things about IPFS ad performance, which I think used to be on something like this list. It got moved off. Um, it's not getting picked up again. Uh, which briefly is that, uh, and I can I'll copy paste it up in a minute. Uh, briefly is that. Uh, ad performance on Windows works just fine, uh, as it turns out. Um, but Linux is having some, like Linux plus ext4 plus Badger is having some quality issues. Uh, and it's unclear where in the stack that fault lies. Um, if you care about what we do about this, uh, stay tuned. Nice, thank you. Can you, yeah, can you add an, a section to the to, to the doc and then we can continue to talk about it going forwards. But yeah, cool. Uh, that sounds fun. Uh, all right. Uh, so if there's no questions on that or comments, then we will move on to, uh, things are moving, uh, migration to multi-hash keys in block store. Um, uh, Adam is not here which is fine um he he has done a whole bunch of work creating this new um migrator tool for um, ipfs repos so that we can move repos between versions in the browser as well as uh in node and other environments um that's super cool uh there was an initial pr which got merged and then then i only managed to review it after that happened and then uh, Adam very kindly did another PR which I reviewed and has since been merged. So we're so the, the tool can now be released. So the next step is to um, include it in um, in JS IPFS uh, so that repo migrations can happen and that unlocks us to uh, to doing uh, to actually creating migrations like moving the block store keys to be uh, using multi hashes instead of CIDs. So. Okay, so we haven't actually made this move yet. We are just preparing for the move. Yes. Okay, yeah, I just want to make sure we're recording doing this. Okay, thank you. I'm definitely looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, will, I will, when we come to actually, when I review it, uh, the, the work to change the keys, then I will um, make sure I kind of sync with you or, or something to, to ensure we're doing the right thing. Um, uh, and nothing unexpected. Uh, Cool. So, uh, what uh, what have we got next? IPFS mount. Uh, sorry, before I move on, anyone questions on that? No. Cool. IPFS mount is up next, um, and there's a demo of basic write support. Where are... who's put that then? Can anyone talk to that? Uh, yeah, this is a, a demo of basic write support. Uh, for IPFS mount using uh, NMP. If you want to watch, go ahead. It's pretty cool. Nice. Is, is that using MFS or? Uh, yes. Well, this, yeah, this is using MFS, well, MFS for IPNS. So yep. I was to write the oh. IPNS keys using nice. mount. Interesting. OK. It's still working for this. Yeah, yeah. Cool. OK. Uh, I'll check that out. Um, all right. Uh, any questions on that one? 
Nice. Uh, okay, next up we have BitSwap and Dirk, do you have an update for us? Yeah, um, <clears throat> so last week I kind of did some experiments with a couple of ideas we had for improving read performance, which we're particularly interested in for Gateway. Um, and in the end we ended up implementing a solution so there's a, a link to a PR for that. Uh, so I guess we're going to try that out on the on the gateways this week. Um, and then I'm also uh, pretty much ready to start code reviews for, for the proof of concept I've been working on for BitSwap. Um, I want to also test it on test ground in the meantime, but there's some parts of it that are unlikely to change. So I think we can start reviewing those because it's going to be a very, very big code review. Uh, with respect to testing on test ground, um, I'd like to get some input from uh, from some other people who have more experience with how BitSwap behaves in the real world, just to you know create some kind of like uh, some some real world scenarios that include like weird things happening, like timeouts and um, a realistic ratio of live nodes to dead nodes and that kind of thing. So that's probably something we can talk about in the test ground meeting tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Uh, when you say uh, your proof of concepts are ready for review, is that like an ask for people to come and review the code or you need to review it or? Uh, well, I think my first victim is going to be Stephen um, and I'll probably, <laughs> I'll get him to, to look over some bits of it, but it's it's pretty enormous. So I think maybe the way to go will be to for us to, to kind of like churn through uh, a first pass and then I'll get other people to come and Come and have a look. Gotcha. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, da, 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 da. So, uh, oh, the, so the meeting you were talking about is the test ground uh, week thing. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Got it. All right. That sounds interesting. Cool. Uh, any questions for Dirk on BitSwap updates? Nice, okay, let's move on. Uh, here we are, next up is the uh, long, long running async await refactor for which there are many things now <laughs> depending on. Uh, yeah, I, I don't personally have an update on this this week. Um, I, I paused on what I was doing um, due to other things that I'm, I was working on, so I don't have an update, but um, Jacob or Vashko, would you like to update us with what's happening in the P2P world? Yeah, so we've got uh, the internal crypto refactor, which will include the plain text two um, update. That is, this should be done this week. And then um, Machi MKG is working on uh, SecIO. So I'll be helping support that as well. Um, and then this week's going to start on peer discovery and the circuit relay refactor. And then PubSub is, uh, Bashko is cranking away on all of those and the, their various PRs are linked in the hack pad. That's it. Nice, thank you. Uh, that looks promising. Um, you're cranking through them. Do you feel uh, like you're going to be done next week? With everything? No. <laughs> but yeah, it's slowly getting. The nice thing is, we're actually like, because we've had to refactor some significant things in the P2P, we actually, a lot of features that we've been wanting for a while are getting incorporated in the changes. So there's a lot more than just the async refactor coming out. So we should have something very nice at the other end of this. Yeah, that was one of the things that I wanted to, I just wanted the, the async await refactor to really enable new things that we've wanted to add for a long time without having to make it really difficult. It's just like, it should just be easy. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's super exciting. Um, very cool. Uh, yeah, what was I gonna say? Um, it's gone. Never mind. Let's move on. Unless there's anyone with any other questions or, or things. No. Okay. Uh, does anyone have any design review proposals this week? I'm hoping to personally. I'm hoping to write up a um, kind of 
uh, RFC for uniting the files API finally. Um, and one I was going to hopefully then uh, circulate that and get consensus for everyone, for everyone um, on what what to do and um, and then do it. <laughs> uh, so that was my task. So hopefully next week we might have something like that to to look at. Uh, anyone? No one else has got any design proposals or things they want to talk about. All right. All right. Stephen. Oh, this is Blocker's ask. But... Sure thing. Go. That's up next. Okay. Anyway. Uh, it's for some of you. Uh, this is for the Unix FS 1.5 spec. Um, uh, there's one open question. Uh, so if you've seen the spec before, it has this concept of default metadata. Um, like looking at uh, numbers that uh, Mib um, or Peter uh, that came up with, the default metadata doesn't really help much, if at all. Uh, so the question is, should we just remove it? Um, if people could look at that comment and uh, just think about it a bit, that would be good. I think it would simplify things, especially uh, Alex Potsitis, who's not here at the moment, yet Alan. He'll be back tomorrow, so hopefully he'll be able to look at that. Um, whoever PRs this, maybe they can tag Alex in the uh, in the pull request and get him to look at it. Uh, cool. Yeah, that's super exciting. I've looked at the pull request and um, it feels really close. And then it it would be amazing to get UNIXFS 1.5 out the door uh, really quickly and enable some awesome package manager uh, experiences. Um, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I don't know, I find that funny. Okay, uh, so um, the other ask, um, I had an ask. Um, I, I didn't make it to the, uh, to like planning for this quarter because I was away. Um, so like in, in a kind of, uh, oh, well, after a good conversation with David um, in, in a people manager uh, situation, we, were, we had a great conversation and it prompted me to kind of, look at like the things that are currently in flight for um well JS IPFS, but also to some extent go IPFS um, and what they depend on um and um just look at the review the roadmap and where we are and um kind of um just yeah I, I made a graph using uh, HackMD uh, which is uh, which has this amazing kind of you can make graphs in markdown which is mad for starters but the point is uh it, uh, it, it's, it's probably healthy for us to just take a step back and look at what the things are in flight. Like it's really good that we're working on some of these, um, some of these things uh, to, to achieve what we said we'd do in the roadmap. There are many things in flight and there is still a lot of stuff we haven't covered, um, but the things in flight, we don't have a lot of time yet left. It's nearly the end of the year. Um, and I really want to get all of them done. Um, uh, it probably won't happen, but um, it's worth having a look at that graph and um, and that issue, just even just to um, familiarize yourself with with what is out there um, and what everything what, what the moving parts are um, and how they relate to each other, um, if only for your own education. Um, so please take a look at that issue and um, and you can comment or or whatever you you feel for that. Um, uh, but yeah, that's just my ask. Uh, all right. Uh, any questions, general questions? We're nearly out of time, but not quite. Yeah, I have a, a brief question or just, I guess, like food for thought for uh, as we go forward, which is one of our DHT fixes is going to be uh, basically having nodes that think they're behind NATS not tell, not tell other people that they are dialable and part of the network. Uh, this will break people who use IPNS internally in, or in offline networks because IPNS currently only uses the DHT. Um, we have pub sub fixes that will fix this, uh, but it, it's, good, like it's currently under an experimental flag. So we should consider if we need to do anything about that. Steven? Uh, so to note, like, Nodes will still be dialable. They just won't join the DHT. Uh, and we do have two potential fixes here, uh, where one is no, like try to see like 
basically if every node is in the same NAT, just join the DHT anyways, because you're within an app. An alternative fix we've talked about is have two DHTs. You have a small DHT for your local net, and then you join the main DHT. Um, yeah, so th these are two fixes that we proposed. We'll see if they if we end up releasing them in time, but yeah. I like the idea of a local DHT. Is there some links I can go and put my opinions on? Uh, there may not be, and if not, then I will get on that today, and I'll I'll put it in the in the issue. Brad, wouldn't a local DHT be the same as using MDNS for the record routing? Except for you the need a word? you need a key right. value store interface layered on top of it. So yeah, alternatively, you could just use PubSub, which will do the MDNS thing, and it will work. But if it's behind an experimental flag, then that means it doesn't work by default for people. So. Stephen, you're muted. Okay. You also need PubSub plus the, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, plus the off, whatever it is, the, not the offline. The, um, the persistent PubSub stuff. Uh, because you need to actually be able to like, query for things that have been published previously. Yeah, but that will land, at, that will land yeah. at the same time that the thing that breaks the local DHT is yeah, will land. Right. Mm -hmm. And honestly, PubSub is probably a better solution just because like, this is not a case where you search a massive set of nodes, it's a case where you're searching a very small set of nodes and you want fast answers, so. Cool, okay. Um, any other comments or questions or things we should cover before we head on off to our, the rest of our days? I think that was it, wasn't it? Yeah, cool. I think we're done. Thank you, everybody, for coming to this uh, exciting edition of the Core Implementations Weekly Sync. Um, and it's been really nice seeing your faces again. Uh, and I hope to see them next week. Uh, have a fun week. Keep on IPFSing. Bye. Bye.